how do we corner on motorcycles? And I mean, like, the theory of it. Like, why do we need lean angle? Or how do we initiate turns? And what is actually making the motorcycle go around the corner? And what sets our maximum corner speed? When we go through a corner, friction generates a centripetal force at the contact patch. This generates a torque around the combined center of gravity of the motorcycle and the rider, which tries to tip the motorcycle out of the corner. Let me demonstrate. When we lean our motorcycles into the corner, this creates a torque that counteracts this torque and thus the motorcycle is balanced in the corner. Pretty simple. Turns are initiated using counter steering or briefly turning the handlebars in the opposite direction of the turn. So if we want the bike to lean this way, we need to turn the handlebars this way. The main reason that it works that way is actually easier to understand than you may think. So what happens is when we turn the handlebars this way without having any lean angle, friction generates a centripetal force at the contact patch. This creates a torque around the combined center of gravity of the motorcycle and me, which wants to tip us out of that corner. So in other words, there's a torque that's going that way, but there's no torque counteracting that torque. Therefore, the motorcycle has to lean in this direction. Another thing that happens when we are rotating the handlebars is that we are essentially introducing a torque to a rotating mass or the front wheel. When we introduce this torque, we get something called gyroscopic precession. And this means that the front wheel actually wants to lean in this direction as well. Now that torque is not all that powerful and doesn't affect things all that much. But something that does affect the entire feel of the motorcycle is what happens next. You see, when we introduce lean to this rotating mass, it actually wants to turn the handlebars in the direction of the corner. This is the main resistance that you feel when you're trying to counter steer at speed. And if you think about it, we're actually introducing roll rate to another rotating mass, the rear wheel. But the rear wheel is rigidly attached to the chassis. So what does that do? Well, this actually makes the motorcycle want to yaw into the corner. So this is yaw, this is roll or lean angle, and this is pitch or back and forth. Trail also plays a big part during this phase. So trail is the offset between where the steering axis meets the ground and where the contact patch is. Because of trail, the front wheel always wants to follow the steering axis. In practice, this means that when we're introducing a lean angle in this direction, an upwards force from the ground is pushing the front wheel to actually turn into that corner. Let me demonstrate. Trail also impacts the resistance we feel when counter steering at speed. A larger trail means we have to use more force to turn the handlebars, and a smaller trail will require less force to be used. The way the front wheel turns with the roll of the motorcycle is how motorcycles are self-stable. And this is how we can ride without having our hands on the handlebars. Something interesting about this is the fact that motorcycles actually travel with an imperceivable weave, not in straight lines. You can see this self-stability and weave very clearly if you observe ghost-riding motorcycles. Wheelbase also has an impact on the resistance that we feel in the handlebars. So a larger wheelbase is going to require more force to turn the bike over. And a larger wheelbase also requires more steering angle to be used for the same corner. Another thing about wheelbase is that it affects the weight bias of the motorcycle. Is it more rearward, forward, or is it neutral? Wheelbase also has an effect on the load transfer that happens when braking and accelerating. A longer wheelbase will mean less load is transferred forward or rearward, and a short wheelbase will have the opposite effect. This is important to understand because when we brake for a corner, the load transfer forward results in the front diving. This diving shortens the trail and thus impacts the force needed to turn the handlebars. When the load is transferred forward, the front tire's contact patch area grows and the rear tire is unloaded, reducing its contact patch area and grip. 
This can cause the rear tire to step out and the motorcycle to yaw into the corner. An effect some of you really fast riders out there may have noticed is that when braking really hard with the front brake and applying the counter steering torque to the handlebars, you feel a huge resistance in the handlebars. This can be attributed to the self-aligning torque of the front tire. This is created by something called pneumatic trail, which comes from the progressive buildup of lateral force along the length of the contact patch, such that the lateral forces are greater towards the rear of the contact patch. This is part of why trail braking involves releasing the brake pressure as we turn into the corner. This also makes us understand how important weight bias front to rear is, or specifically the distance from the combined center of gravity of the motorcycle and the rider to the front and rear wheels. A front-heavy motorcycle will generally be harder to steer at low speeds, while having the advantage of having adequate load on the front for grip at higher speeds. Especially good on sport bikes, since the aerodynamic forces will tend to lift the front at very high speeds. So we're in the corner, the motorcycle is leaned over and the front wheel is pointing in the direction of the turn. We're in something called steady-state turning. What is actually causing the motorcycle to turn? Well, two things, slip angle and camber force. Let's first discuss how a four-wheeled vehicle turns, as this will help us understand the concept of slip angle. Until you turn the front wheel of a car, the car wants to go in a straight line. When the front wheels are turned into the corner, the car's trajectory will not follow exactly where the wheel is pointed. The angle between where the wheel is pointing and the direction in which it actually is traveling is known as the slip angle. Since motorcycles lean into corners, this works in a slightly different way. As the lean angle increases, the tire's contact patch flattens and deforms. This makes the tire want to turn around a very tight radius cone. The radius of this cone is smaller than the bend radius. This is the main mechanism which generates the cornering force on a bike called camber force. The amount of tire slip needed to maintain a balanced turn depends on a lot of factors and also coincides with the lean angle of the motorcycle. Higher lean angles will generally require more slip angle, which makes sense since higher lean angles also mean higher lateral forces. I've seen a lot of debates around why we would want to minimize the lean angle of the motorcycle in this steady state. The main way we can do this is by hanging to the inside of the motorcycle like this, which translates the combined center of gravity of the motorcycle and the rider to the inside, effectively meaning that the motorcycle can be more upright. Now, the main reason you would want to do this is because we want the suspension to work at an optimum angle. You see, what happens is when we lean over, the suspension starts binding, and that means that it can't move up and down as efficiently. Now, some motorcycles can achieve limited lean angles simply because components such as foot pegs and parts of the chassis starts dragging against the ground above certain lean angles. How do we know how fast we can corner? Well, the best way to look at this is to plot the longitudinal g-forces, or braking and accelerating, versus the lateral g-forces, or the cornering forces. When you plot these two towards each other in what is called a GG diagram, you usually see something called a friction ellipse. This is data from my latest supermoto race with 8 laps. One of the first things to note is that there are big empty areas where I presumably could be braking at negative 1G and cornering at 1G. This is because the tires would likely lose grip if I were to attempt such feat. Basically, the tires can only handle a limited amount of accelerating or braking and lateral force at the same time. One thing we can note as well is that at the maximum achieved lateral Gs, I am either accelerating or braking at the same time. This makes sense, as it is for one very hard to maintain an absolutely constant speed on a motorcycle, and two, when racing you have to either be accelerating or braking. Hypothetically speaking, we could achieve the highest lateral Gs at zero longitudinal Gs. But in practice, it's not very practical, does not render faster lap times, or is even very achievable in the first place. 
so we understand the relationship between accelerating, braking, and cornering. What actually sets the lateral acceleration? Well, our speed and line. A higher speed yields a higher lateral acceleration, and a larger radius a lower lateral acceleration. Hypothetically speaking, we can calculate how much lean angle is needed for a given corner radius, speed, motorcycle's COG height, and tire width by using the following equation. If we use this equation to calculate how many lateral G's Marquez tires are handling at, say, 65 degrees of lean angle, his tires should be handling around 2.1 lateral G's. Weight bias is another very important aspect of how fast we can go in a corner. So weight bias is the mass distribution front to rear on the motorcycle. A rear heavy motorcycle is going to understeer in the corner, or the front wheel is going to want to go out from the corner. Vice versa, a front heavy motorcycle is going to have more lateral grip on the front tire, which means that the rear tire is going to want to come around into a slide, or it's going to oversteer. Something that's very important to understand about weight, and something that a lot of people seem to misunderstand, is that lighter bikes can corner faster. If we attach a giant rock to our motorcycle, it means we now have to carry less corner speed. What happens is, when we increase the vertical load, we get back less and less lateral friction from the tires. This is called tire load sensitivity. We talked about the lateral G's for racing, but what about on the street? On the street, the limit is going to be closer to 1 G. Less if the tire pressures are off and the road is not perfect. Keeping things simple, it means that we don't want to be leaning more than 45 degrees ever when riding on the street. I hope you've learned something today. And remember, there is always something new to learn. It's gotta be against the law to look this damn good.